We've accepted the land's imprint. We've been looking at all the different areas on the property that we can grow plants, different kinds of plants, and we've also been defining the microclimates on the property. The south side of the house, the east, west, and north side of the house, any building, the edge of a forest, all these areas have slightly different climates. Now in Minnesota we were 3B, now we're 4A in the USDA growing zone. You wouldn't expect us to be able to grow peaches. But in this area, in this microclimate, on the south side of the house, about 10 feet away from the house, and we're about 4 feet away from pavement, is a microclimate that's not 4A. It might be 4B, it might even be 5. Because in this area we have a lot of radiant heat, we have a lot of energy that these plants are protected by. With a little help of some kaolin and clay, which is the white on the peach, you can see that on the leaves for any kind of pests that we might have. Basically, this is an organic peach tree growing right by the front steps of the house. There are other opportunities also for plants if we want to work a little bit closer with them. In this case, we have figs. And figs can grow in this area as long as they're not left outside in the winter and basically under about 50 degrees, 45 degrees, they're going to lose their leaves. But in this case, we bring these potted figs in for the winter, put them in a window, and they keep their leaves constantly. They actually don't lose their leaves. And if we can keep the leaves all year, you can kind of see we're going to get some figs. And actually on one over here, we have our crop. These are continually producing figs from late summer until the fall and, as soon, and when we bring them inside. So we can have all sorts of different fruit in our area, year-round or at least in seasonal time where we can collect them, right, and can them and preserve them for the winter time. But just because we have a climate that says it's cold and temperate and there's a lot of things that we can't grow doesn't mean that we can't create spaces, right, that we can't adapt to it to get all sorts of variety and diversity in our diet. So in this process, as we look for these opportunities, we're adapting our goals to the land, not the other way around. We're trying to figure out what we can do, not what we want to do, and then seeing what envelope we can push just a little bit to get a little bit more different production. There's a lot of things we can do when you know the physiology of the plants, their life history. Just the tolerances alone of a simple peach tree, what that can handle. And if I can get this peach tree to survive, what other plants are like this peach tree that now I can even have a broader scope of plants and more diversity in my diet? So we have identified this area as a microclimate. We understand that here, the climate is slightly different. It's slightly warmer. It might be more humid. It might be even drier. But what are the elements on the landscape that create that microclimate? Well, in this case, we have large thermal mass in this area, a house. The dark wood, the logs. We also have pavement of the driveway in front, all collecting light during the day in the south facing area and turning it into radiant energy, into heat. And even at night, that energy is radiating from the pavement and the house out to the landscape. If we park a car out here in the wintertime and there's frost or there's even ice, the side that faces the house doesn't freeze. There's no frost on it and there's no ice on it. Why is that? Because the radiant energy all night is still coming from the house, coming from the thermal mass of the driveway. Now we put trees in that area they are also benefiting from that because the radiant energy of the house is basically frost-proofing this area for these trees and creating that microclimate for us. 